our uh, youth pastor Vladimir he's not uh, he is not here with us today uh, he is uh, in Ukraine right now I uh, talked to him today he is uh, he went to Africa went with a the group they had a tremendous time they had a good time there <coughs> and uh, now they are in uh, in Ukraine uh, enjoying the snow and the what are got some things going on there in Ukraine so but uh, things are things are okay he's doing good he's gonna the, the, he's, he's there for a conference uh, in the ministry of Pastor Vladimir Montan and uh, he's gonna be there for uh, well, it was a conference Friday Saturday Sunday and then he's coming back here on Monday so next Wednesday he's gonna be here back with us so that's that's awesome <coughs> quick announcements before we go further uh, something that I want to share with you um, we have uh, of course, Sunday service at 10 a.m. Nine, 9 o'clock is prayer, so please come for that. Friday night, we're going to have prayer at 10 o'clock, so uh, 10 p.m. So uh, come uh, come join us in prayer. Uh, so we pray for our city, for our families, for our friends, and, and, and the other needs that are around. Uh, and um, there are a couple events that were happening, but I'm not. Huh? Oh, yes, that's what I want to mention. So we have a box. Is that up there? Is standing out there? Okay, so uh, th there will be okay. But <coughs> for for future, how many more weeks we have? Okay, so uh, here, here here's the thing we're doing. We're trying to raise 300 toys for uh, children with their special needs. Yeah, they have different kinds of mental challenges, uh, and there's those uh, those families that have those kids. We want to try to raise 300 toys. Uh, to donate it to them uh, on the Christmas, the, the, we partner up with this uh, uh, foundation. They're gonna hold a little um, party for them, and they gonna they want to give out the gifts. And so we want to participate in that, and we want to uh, give uh, something from ourselves. We want to give toys. So um, <coughs> there's a box already. There's we have uh, quite a few toys, and we thank you for those that are, uh, came and brought them. But we still have ten more days. So next Sunday, so this coming up Sunday. Next Wednesday and the last Sunday would be the last, right? Okay, so next Wednesday is the last Wednesday. So you guys, please Sunday and Wednesday, please. Uh, we still need to. We still need uh, quite a bit uh, toy, quite a uh, quite a bit few toys there. So please come and bring your. If you have toys that are gently used or barely used, they're in good condition, please bring them. If you don't have any toys that uh, in your house that you can bring, go out and get something for you know uh, five, six bucks, ten bucks or something. Some of the kids, um, I, I don't know where you even go buy. Toys R Us, I think, right? <laughs> Walmart. Uh, and so I don't have kids yet, so I don't, obviously don't know where they stand. But anyway, something for, you know, young kids, I don't know, something like this. So come bring them, so come bring them toys so they can enjoy and they can, uh, they can enjoy this holiday season. And, uh, and just uh, uh, so that we give something of ourselves. Amen? So that's another, that's an announcement that we have for today. I want to share something quickly with you guys. <clears throat> I'll try quickly, but um, we'll see how it goes. Something from, uh, if you guys can open the Bibles to Exodus chapter 23. And it's going to be something around that chapter. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read uh, verse 30, just for the sake of, so we have some kind of foundation to start with. Um, Little by little, I will drive them out from before you until, have, until you have increased and you inherit the land. Actually, um, re let's, read, let's read verse 29. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you. Verse 30, little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. Um, the title of my message that I titled today <coughs> comes from verse 30. As you increase, that's kind of what I entitled, uh, and I'll explain as we go along why, uh, what, what, I'm, what, what I will be talking about. So I had something else prepared in mind to, to speak today on, but um, I literally a couple hours before I changed it because I wanted to bring something uh, to you guys, something practical something uh, that you can apply in your life, something you can take from the Word of God. And as young people, um, we are all, not just young people, everybody, every person, 
has a desire to be successful. Every person has a desire to be great, to do great things. Every person uh, in their heart desires to be significant, desires to make, um, to make some kind of a change uh, in society, in their life, maybe in their family, maybe, uh, you know, your family, nobody in your family went to college. Maybe in, uh, you want to make a change in your, in your school, maybe you want to make a change in your neighborhood, you want to make a change uh, in, in your country, whatever it is. But every one of us, we desire to be great, to do something great, to accomplish something. That's why we, uh, or there's a good reason why we go to college, why we obtain a degree, not only so that we can get a, a paying job, which, you know, so we can provide for ourselves, which is one of the reasons, but also so we can make some kind of a difference in life, in society, and in our lives. Amen? Is everybody on the same page? Does everybody wants to make a difference in their life? Amen? Well, half of you do. The rest of you, I think you do. But uh, that's good. Uh, that's good. So, um, that's, that's really good. Um, anyways, so all of us have this great desire to be great. All of us have a desire to accomplish something. None of us want to be nobodies. No, none of us, us want to be insignificant and none of us want to be um, ignored. We want to be seen. We want to be recognized for something that we did, something, uh, something we accomplished in life. True? Yes. Okay. So we're, we got that figured it out this part so moving on to the next part the good thing about our God is that God wants to help us with these desires as a matter of fact God is the one that installed these desires and and uh, uh, these inspiration these dreams in our life the good desires good dreams that you have in your life um, you know you might think they come uh, you might think they come from just from you or because you thought of them but in reality it's actually God is the one that placed them in your heart God uh, is the one that created you. He knew, He formed you. He knew uh, uh, who you're going to be, who you're going to become. And He placed those uh, desires and those dreams and those goals in your life for you to achieve them and to become that person. Amen. So um, God wants us. God is the designer of all dreams and inspirations. And not only God wants or gives us those uh, not only God wants us uh, to have those things he promises that if we follow him if we go after him if we do what he says he will do uh, we will uh, we will do what he says in his word that we will achieve those things that we will uh, get to those things that we dream and desire and not only that he promised he promises that he will be also the one that will help us with it that He will help us to accomplish our dream. He is going to be the one that, to help us, to give us strength, to, to give us creativity, to give us wisdom, to accomplish the dreams and desires and inspiration that God has for us. Amen? So, um, God has a promise for us. So, how does the scripture that I just read relates um, to what I'm speaking to you guys about? So, let me just lay a little background work on, on, on these on this, uh, two verses that I read. So this is when um, Israel, Israelites left Egypt and they're about to go and, 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 and go into the promised land. The promised land that God has promised them for so many years. A land that flows with milk and honey, you know, vineyards that they didn't plant, you know, houses they didn't build, wells that they, didn't, they did not dig. So all these things, all these promises, they're about to go into it. And uh, God, so this is, this is, before this uh, and this is what God says he says that as we read I will not drive out so he's talking about the land he says you're gonna go in the land I'm gonna bless you you're gonna go in the land you're gonna conquer it he, he told them this is how big uh, the promise is this is what you can conquer this I'm giving this land to you and he says as you're gonna go in you will drive you know you will drive your enemies out uh, but it's not gonna be all at once how many you have again great dreams and big green dreams and great inspiration one thing that we can learn from this scripture is that um, when our dream does not come all at once we don't have to be disappointed this is actually part of God's plan and I'll show you how it is about part of God's plan when we have uh, great dreams and inspiration we have we get we have great goals we want to achieve some great things it does not all come in a basket packed and, and nicely decorated all at once just dropped in your doorstep and say here we go this is what you this is this is for your life 
this is this is what you wanted this is what you dreamed you know kind of like um a lot of times uh, especially in, in America in, in Western cultures we have this uh, fast food mindset or this uh, kind of microwave mindset where I want it now I want it quick I want it in three seconds and uh, you know we don't um, you know soups are made in three seconds microwave instead instead of instead of 30 40 minutes and and, and us actually putting time and in, in, in ingredients into making it you see what I'm, you see what I'm saying so um, this is actually part of God's plan that he wants to give us as we take another step with him forward as we continue to walk with God as we continue to obey uh, his instructions in our life that one by one step by step we continue to conquer that promise and we continue to live out a dream that God has for us and continue to conquer it amen how many of you know a lot of us are in schools and a lot of us in colleges or you've been in school how many of you know that you don't earn a degree in one day you don't earn a degree in uh you don't earn a degree in, in one year, unless you're genius, of course. Uh, but regardless of the fact, you don't, you don't earn a degree in one day. You have a goal, you have a vision that you set before you, let's say to become an engineer. It takes, I don't know, what, six years, eight years to become an engineer, something like that. Uh, and so uh, you pursuing that goal and you taking semester at a time, you taking class at a time, and you're not discouraged because after two years you didn't, you didn't receive your degree right because you have a goal and that's how it how it is in our life and uh in, in with our goals and our dreams is that we always have to understand that they will come in parts and plans and we have to take a step at a time even if we don't see the next step we do this step and god will help us and show us the next step amen okay so <clears throat> the wonderful thing about our god is god will always will promise you and have it available for you more than you can conquer more than you can get in your own strength in in the case of Israel God has promised them a huge territory not the territory that they occupy that, are, that, that occupy that they eventually occupied for the reason is because God promised them so much and you will have as much as you're willing to conquer you will have in your life as much as you're willing to sacrifice for, as much as you're willing to go for, as much as you're willing to uh, conquer in your life. God is God of no limits. God is God uh, that has no limitation and He has uh, enough resources, enough power, enough, uh, enough strength for you to achieve your wildest dreams. But it's up to you how far and how much you will conquer. Israelites they conquered certain territory and they said, you know what, good, it's good enough for me, good enough for me, my family. I'm just going to settle for it. So they settled for way less than what God had for them. So I want to tell you today that God uh, has so much for you in store, for, e for your everyday life. It's up to you how far you're willing to go and take it with Him. Amen. Um, you know, we're talking, we're talking about... We're talking about God um, as a, not just a God, some kind of cloud up in the sky, some kind of mystical fog. We're not talking about God that is just irrelevant to our daily life. You don't need a God that's irrelevant to your daily life. See, our God, He is a God of daily things. He is God of our dreams. He is God of our passions. He is God of our inspirations. He is God of our daily things. And if we... Uh, if we just view God as like, you know, a God that I come to church and, you know, I kind of like, you know, I like coming to church and I just spend two hours a week here or, you know, twice a week, two hours or whatever it is. And I just do a little check mark and I leave and me and God have nothing in common. God and my school have nothing in common. God and my dreams have nothing in common. You know, I do everything on my own. Then why do you need a God? Why, why do you need God like that? I'm talking about God. I'm serving such a God. I'm... Uh, I know that kind of God that is involved in every day of our life and wants to be involved and help us with every single thing. Wants to help us from the very moment we wake up to the very moment we go to bed. Help us with every single thing in our life. Amen? And um, here's, here's the main kind of thing. What I, th this is where I want to go into. 
here's um listen to what God says he's like he says I will not I will not drive them out he's talking about their enemies or the people that occupied their promised land in one year lest they lest the land becomes desolate and the beasts of the field become too numerous for you little by little little I will drive them out before you until you have increased and when I read this word until you have increased or another translation says as you increase I will increase your land I that 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 that's kind of stopped me and 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 really sunk deep in my heart and um, that I have a part to play in my dream in my inspiration in my goal in what God has put in my life I have a part to play what is my part my part is to increase increase in every area of our life and I'm gonna list a couple of things that that God wants us to increase in and I'll give you I'll give you an example I remember when I was when I was really really young I don't know seven eight nine maybe even younger uh, and um, it was um, it was back in Russia so it's okay to share <laughs> my uh, my <laughs> my uh my dad and and uh, i and and uh and my my siblings we would uh one one of the day a week sometimes you know a couple times a month we would go out on a drive and and uh drive actually we drive and dad so we started out when we were really really young i couldn't even reach the pedal so we would just sit on dad's lap and just steer around and go and he let us steer and then he'll <laughs> switch the gears and do everything else and we just steer so that was fun you know, and then of course we grew up, we were able to reach the pedals, and then he taught us to drive, and then it was horrible when my mom was in the car, because she's like, yeah, you know, she was freaking out every single turn. But my dad was all calm and teaching us how to drive. You know, and I remember this one moment, uh, I, I asked that, you know, uh, one time, and it has been a while we've been driving, and so I kind of got hint of it, you know, but I was still really young, probably eight, nine, maybe ten, or something like that. And I asked, uh, you know, um, I, I asked, I asked for like, used to drive, and he said, no, no. When you grow up, I'll get you. I'll get you. Your own, you're gonna have your own car. You're gonna drive your own car, but not this time. So, anyways, he said, when you grow up, when I was, when I read this, this is like, came up and popped into my head. I'm like, oh, okay, this is a good story. I, I begin to understand the scripture. So, you know, driving was my like ambition my goal you know as every probably guy when they're young and literally you know they, they want to drive and so this was my goal and my this is my was dreams you know, to drive the car especially by myself without parents right and so um but i was not at that i was not at that age i was not at the size that i was able to do that at that point yet i still had to increase in, in increase in in my size and of course in the size of my brains too okay uh, a lot of foolish things when you're young and so when I read this it came kind of clear to me that there are things that God is wanting to give us he's willing to give us he already has in store for us he already he already put it in our account it's already there it's ready but he's waiting for us to grow into it to uh, to grow into it does it make sense yeah. there are things that we will not even how bad that God wanted to give it to us until we grow up, until we mature, until we take our right position, we will just not, will not be able to receive those things. Make sense? So we are to increase. And as we increase, God says that I will increase your territory. I will increase your influence. I will incre uh, increase your um, dream. I will increase, I will show you more things. You'll be able to conquer greater things. And you'll be able to take next step. You'll be able to accomplish the things that you will never dreamt that you will accomplish. Amen. So we have a role to, pr to play in to receive our promise uh, to accomplish our dream. So a number one thing first thing I'm going to share with you guys five things that I think it's essential for us to increase in if we are to walk in a, in a promise of God or walk into the or into the uh, walk in the fullness of our call and walk in the fullness whatever you want to call it in the fullness uh, of your uh, destiny or whatever it is that that you you call it or whatever it is that you're pursuing in your life number one thing I think it's the main the most important and the main thing is to increase in our um, relationship with God relationship with God is the foundation 
to our uh, to uh, foundation to our life. Because success can come and go. Things in our life can come and go. One thing must remain steady and constant is our relationship with God because our relationship with God will bring us through good, bad, and the ugly. Our relationship with God will su help us to sustain the good things that God has for us. Our relationship with God is, is very vital and important because it not only feeds our soul, our spirit, and secures our eternity, but it also helps us in every single day of our life. Amen? In uh, John, John 3, verse 1 and 2, uh, John writes, it says, Prosper as your soul prospers. So we must be prospering in our soul, in our relationship with God, before we can truly prosper in our life. Before we can truly prosper in every, uh, every aspect of our life. Sure, um, we see a lot of people that prosper without having a relationship with God. Sure, we see a lot of people make a lot of money without having a relationship with God. But we see for some reason a lot of, a lot of people that reach high places for some reason, not able to hold on to those uh, in those in those places. So uh, sometimes they, people, you know, having everything for some reason can't have a settled home. You know, for some reason, people having everything can't have a settled life, can't have peace in their heart. They have to do drugs. Some people commit suicide because success without God is not a success. Is not a true success. So number one thing, we must prosper in our relationship with God because it's foundation for our life. And number two, is uh, because it will sustain our success. Longevity of our success depends on the strength of our success uh, of our relationship with God. Number two, we must increase in our character. Now, so number one, a relationship with God was a foundation for our life. Number two, foundation for our success is our character. So we must constantly grow in our character. We must constantly um, challenge ourselves. With our character. Someone said your gift will take you up. But your character will keep you there. And that's why we, we've seen so many. Uh, you know on the new. Uh, you know we see through. Uh, in the newspapers. News, uh, news medias. And, and uh, do just a few, a few track of uh, people in Hollywood. And other places. Where a lot of times people have a great tremendous gift. And gift takes them up high. It takes them to the high places. It takes them. They begin to have a lot of influence. A lot of money. A lot of things. But because they don't have a character, because they don't have, uh, the, their character is not able to sustain the pressures of life, the, pre the, the pressure of high places. They crumble down. They, uh, like, we already, like I already said, you know, they, 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 they go into drugs and into a moral life and, and uh, they destroy the life and then at the end many times end up dead, committed suicide or overdose or, or other things. So um, our character is is very important is a, is a foundation for success in our life part of character is integrity honesty discipline hard work patience sacrifice and love those things are part of character we must and I can speak on each and one of those but those things we must increase in those things in our life we must increase our character we must constantly work and be aware so that our character increase this is the only way we can achieve what God has for us and this is a, a blueprint that God left for us for our success amen um, number three we need to increase mentally what I mean by that is in in positive and positive thinking because it's impossible to achieve anything that God for, has for you if you're a person that does not take care of of your thoughts and your mind if you're a person that constantly thinks negative, God, like we already said many times in our church, God works with people that have faith. What is faith? Faith is positive. Faith is, a, is that you simply trust and believe that God will work all things for your good. Amen? This is what the faith is. Faith is not in faith, but faith is in God, that God is working on your behalf. And in every situation, regardless of how it looks right now, you know that God will able to work it out for your good so we need to constantly work on our mindsets on our uh, on, on our on our on our thinking if we think negative in our lives we will not be able to achieve what god has for us 
we just will not be able to go further because our mind you know we stretch we stretch our mind by thinking positive and as much as you stretch your mind this is where you're going to be comfortable because you always will work in your comfort zone you will always be in your comfort zone so if you continue to stretch your mind the things that were uncomfortable for you will become comfortable and so because if you even if you pick a place in a good place in a good position in your life um, and but you are haven't stretched yourself you haven't increased yourself to that to that capacity it will be not comfortable it will not be it will not be you will not fit there and eventually you will leave or you will you'll be uh, left out because you didn't stretch yourself so we constantly have to constantly have to stretch ourselves and our mindset and our positive uh, our positive thinking Bible says that uh, it's impossible to please God without faith and like I said faith is positive faith is knowing that God's working everything out for your good believing and trusting in God that he's a good father he's a he's always looking out for you he's always uh, do he's always looking for the best in your life and when we when we think positive we begin to attract positive things in our life this is biblical principle our, 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 our mind our thoughts our subconscious is is a is is like a magnet as a matter of fact it's actually is a a, a magnet um, I just actually recently just read a, a study on quantum physics regarding our thoughts and our subconscious um, it's the principles that by and I'm just gonna touch really quick and I hope I won't bore you with that but um, the principles that Bible has been talking for thousands and thousands of years now only scientists are able to well, come to be just to scratch the surface and actually scientifically prove that what God says that we might how we supposed to think about ourselves how we're supposed to think and how we're supposed to act is actually true um, anyways uh, how, how can I bring it to you guys in simple form uh, anyway so um, scientists and on, on, uh, and on, on uh, I just read this article on quantum, quantum physics they they said they um, so I don't know how they measure it and all this stuff I mean I kind of don't understand their scientific terms and all this stuff to to the full thing but uh, they 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 pretty much say that your 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 thoughts your thought uh, your thoughts uh, are like a a powerful uh, energy he said even just our body our body uh, we, our body contains so much energy equivalent to 34 nuclear atomic bombs that's how much energy we contain within ourselves and so he says our thoughts and our subconscious is is uh, it, it gives out and has this energy on, on uh, some quantum physics stuff or well, I don't know blah, blah 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 whatever anyways but he says that it's they they've done a lot of studies where they where they proven what people that have positive thoughts positive some conscious uh, some conscious thoughts and all the, and all that good stuff said so they automatically begin like it's like the magnet that attracts the positive stuff and people that have negative thoughts negative self-view negative um, uh, consciousness they begin to attract bad and wrong things in their life I want to ask you today what do you think how do you think about yourself what do you think about your family what do you think about your personal life about your finances do what kind of thoughts do you have do you do you constantly think oh you know um, why did I even try this I knew it's not gonna happen oh uh, this this nothing good ever happens to me or this is this will never happen to me I will not you know I will not get married or I will not find somebody in my life I will not succeed with this and that if you have this kind of mindset in your life and thoughts in your life you will not be able to move forward with God because God always thinks positive God always has good things in store for us even regardless of the bad things that happen in our life God always has good outcome in the midst of those things and so even if you find yourself in a bad situation even if you find yourself uh, in, in a difficult situation right now in your life and you don't know where to go and what to do uh, always be confident that God is good and that even in this situation you will come out of it and you will learn the lessons that eventually will take you to your destiny and your goal in your life amen number four we must increase in our knowledge and this is sort of obvious for some people so for some other for some not so 
but we must increase in our knowledge. Um, this is the reason why we go to school. This is why we, the reason why we go to college. This is the reason why if, you, if you're learning about um, you know, different aspects of your life or whatever, we must increase in our knowledge. So this right now, we're coming down to even more, 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 uh, more practical things. So if you have, again, if you have a, uh, a goal to become an engineer, to become a singer, to become uh, a teacher, yes, we have teacher in our midst. If you have a goal to, um, you know, to play piano, to play a musical instrument, whatever that is, you must increase in knowledge in that area. It's foolish to sit on your couch and think that you're going to become great one day without, in, without acquiring knowledge in that area, in that subject. Is this helping anybody? We must, if we're going to achieve the full potential in our life, we must increase in that knowledge. Whatever it is, if it's, uh, you know, if it's becoming a teacher, senior, a dancer, becoming a, a writer, becoming whatever it is, we must, we must increase in that knowledge of that field. We always, we, we need to go to schooling, if that takes schooling, if we need to go to college, we need to do whatever we need to, whatever we need to do. Number two, we must, we must read uh, other materials and being on top of things in that sphere we need to know what's going on we need to read books because a lot of people settle for I got a degree I don't need to learn anymore I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do well remember what I said you're gonna have in your life as much as you want to conquer if you settle for this and you're gonna that's what you're gonna have but if you want to continue continues to, to grow and uh, you want to continue to, to conquer new ground and you you have a new adventure in your life you must continuously to expand and grow and one of the areas is your knowledge you always have to grow in that area if it's marketing or if it's business you have to constantly be on top of things what's going on in business world what's going on in the marketing world new strategies new ideas and you continue to grow read other books see how pe other people succeeded meet with them if you have a chance listen to them get advices continue to grow in your knowledge in any way you can amen and number three be curious be curious like a curious George George right always always want to know how things and why things work and and don't be don't be just passive in your mind constantly engage your mind constantly expand your mind continue to grow and God will help you with it God will drop people into your life if you don't even Bible says if you seek you will find simple as that but if you don't even begin to seek if you don't begin to put effort in it then what is God gonna what is God gonna do you, you, how should I say this? You engage God in your work. If you want to take another step, He will take it with you. If you want to learn something new, conquer something new, He will go with you. But if you settle for what you have now, if you settle to work in McDonald's for the rest of your life, you will work in McDonald's for the rest of your life. And please don't get me wrong, working in McDonald's is, uh, is not a bad thing. It's a good place to work. Uh, but if this is not your goal, this is not your vision, if you don't go further in life, you're not going to achieve anything. So we must constantly be curious and constantly increase in our knowledge in the area where we want to go. Amen. And the last thing um, is increase in skill. This is another increasement that we have to do. So what I mean by increase in skill, for example, you want to become a guitar player or you want to be become a, a, a piano player. You want to become a welder or you want to become a, uh, a I, I don't know, you name any profession or anything. There's a certain set of skills that come along with, with what you're trying to achieve or who you're trying to become, right? Am I right? Even teachers, right, have to have certain kind of skills. All kinds of skills. Sorry, Bryce. But uh, <laughs> this is just a joke, a bad one, actually. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, some of you are laughing good, so you're not asleep. But anyways, we must increase in skills. Uh, we, must, we must perfect our skills. We need to practice our skills. We don't just, uh, you know, a lot of people, and um, I'll speak from uh, on musicians' behalf not right now, but I'm sure that applies to every other area. Uh, the, the, uh, the tendency sometimes of musicians, when they have an aspiration to become a musician, guitar player, you know, drummer, I, whatever instrument you want to call it, but I'm sure it applies to every other sphere of your life, is they, 
they so uh, they're so eager to learn so they learn and they this past this they pass this first stage of being an amateur they get kind of good the kind of things are kind of working out and so and then this the, it comes right somewhere about midpoint there comes this mediocrity stage when you know you're good you can fair you can pretty much play most of the things okay and you're like yeah i got this it's okay and people settle that there and they stop there they they kind of i'm okay and i'm i'm good with it okay and this is where a lot of people kind of fall short and they just become an average they never stand out and they never go beyond what uh, you know beyond the crowd they never reach what the potential that god has for them you must practice your skill to your perfection and take it further always challenge yourself learn something new and when we're gonna become this kind these kind of people when we if you take these five simple steps or five uh, five simple points and if you begin to increase it each one of them slowly but surely slowly but surely you will see the difference in your life you will not you will never be average this is what this 10% or, or, or this 8% of people that that achieve great things in their life these those the, these are the steps or these are the things that they do they never satisfy what they have now and they continue to grow and grow further and and achieve great things if you're gonna be the teacher make a goal for yourself to be the best teacher that there is if you're gonna be a guitar player make sure you set the goal for yourself that I'm gonna be the best guitar player that there is you know if I'm gonna be an engineer you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be the best engineer I'm gonna come up and create the best things that I can possibly be I'm gonna be the best that I could be because God is backing me up amen you know uh, people in this world uh, people in the world take these steps they apply it and they become successful in their life so you might say well why do I need then why do I need God in my life why do I need God and to achieve those things because God because with God like we spoke in uh, early in the beginning even if we achieve those things God is the one that help us to sustain it God is the one not only that you know we live in a life and life is uh, you know we plan one thing today tomorrow whole other thing ha can happen you know we plan to have a great uh, great life and great plans but as many of us already know and some of us you know we're still young but even in our young age we already uh, seen and acknowledged that life throws a curveball sometimes sometimes you plan for one thing but whole other thing ca happens and life can throw challenges in our way life can throw a, a roadblocks in our way life can sh uh, can put a, a wall in front of us where we know with our strength with our abilities we cannot conquer this is why we need God so God number one thing it's he will he'll give us peace and joy while we doing all those things he'll give us satisfaction while we're reaching for our goal at the same time empower us and to give us strength to reach our goal amen and um to Israel uh, we, we read this um, about Israel that uh, what God was saying as you increase I will drive the enemies out of your way and but listen to what earlier in in verse 25 he says so you shall serve Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and I will take the sickness away from the midst of you and verse 26 no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land I will fulfill the number of your days so look on verse 26 he says that I will that no one will suffer miscarriage or be barren, barren in your land and which what was the commandment of Israel uh, God gave to Israel to increase right increase meaning you know give birth you know increase in size you know increase in wealth and so God says even in that place even in that commandment that I gave you to increase I will help you with that I will take care of you as you make the desire to increase to go further I will help you to increase I will give you the strength and I will make sure that things will fall on your path I will make sure that I will connect you with the right kind of people I will make sure that I will set you up on the right play, uh, place I will give you the right resources I will give you the strength even in the time when you feel like giving up I will give you the the strength to go forward and to, to for you to increase and to get to the place what I called you to be amen so um we need God and, and and the best thing the best thing in verse 30 that we 
that we read that God says that he will drive the enemies out as we increase. How, how many we have some enemies in our life? And I don't mean people. I mean things that we're battling in our lives, the, 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 the habits, the, the um, you know, uh, things in our families, things, are, things that are coming against us. And uh, God says that if we take a step of faith with him, if we take a charge with him to go and increase in our life, to grow stronger, first of all, he will help us with it. And then he will drive the enemies out of our promise. And he will drive those things that are seem to be impossible for us to achieve. That he will drive away the impossibilities in our life. And help us to achieve what God has in store for us. Amen? Amen. So, um, did, did, did it help anybody? Did anybody get something out of it? Amen.